communication by aliens through dreams. <laughs> Out of body experiences, mind linking with animals. Changing of consciousness. <laughs> mind over matter and telepathy. Mental telepathy. Mind control by aliens. I not only find these false teachings objectionable, but consider the immersing of them in humor and presenting them as a game is very dangerous. Not only not any of this was mentioned in advertisements for the game, I implore you to at least make it clear to unaware buyers that this is a new age game that deals with religion. As a computer consultant and part-time youth pastor, <laughs> I have an obligation to others in this regard. I will await your response before deciding how to further fulfill my responsibilities to warn others. <laughs> So I am now doing you a public service and warning you, <laughs> Reverend Merwin Updike, Altoona, Pennsylvania. Um, this is a real letter. And we actually weren't sure what to do with it, so we published it in our, in our newsletter and figured that, you know, you know, whatever. People were now warned, so. <laughs> but he was very accurate. I couldn't have come up with that list myself if I did it. <laughs> So anyway, after two days of brainstorming with David Spangler, I returned to the ranch and began assembling it all. Um, original character's name was Jason. Um, he was a reporter. Um, the game was kind of funny, but it was missing something. And Ron Gilbert brought this up by asking for a meeting. And so we brought together the, all the game designers, um, Steve Arnold, and we had like you know, a three or four hour meeting to go over the game. And you know, Ron's point was it was a good game, but it just wasn't quite there yet. Um, so out of the two or three, out of that meeting came um, Zach's name out of a Marin County phone book. Um, the idea that he was a reporter for a sleazy tabloid <laughs> and the name of the game. Um, and we were off. Just by doing that, just gave it a 90, de 90 degree twist into kind of this ridiculous absurdity. So everything, we could, everything that I had already designed stayed. It just was now funnier, wacky. So here's the game. Um, does any, anyone know Steve Purcell? Steve Purcell was the, the guy who does Sam and Max, um, which he's the original creator of the Sam and Max cartoons. Where he did this, this is before he was doing, he was just an artist for us at the time. And he did this cover. And in fact, if you know what Steve looks like, that's Steve Purcell on the cover. He kind of modeled this after himself. And um, Annie Laris was, um, and in fact, all the women in the game were, were based on our significant others. Um, Annie Laris was my wife's maiden name, Annie Fox now. And um, she, was, she was featured in the game. And, and Melissa and um, Lisa were the other ones. So again, back of the box. Um, let's zoom in on that picture. <laughs> <laughs> now that you see me with nose glasses and a hat, I don't have a beard now. I actually grew beards because it saved about you know, five minutes a day, which we really needed to get the game done. So, um, And the other, the other guy on the left is Matthew Kane, who co-designed. Well, he came in afterwards and, and basically did a, maybe a third to half of the scripting and, and the music for the game, and it was great. So some shots from Zach. Um, it's, it's available um, in 256 colors from the, the version we did for the FM Towns machine. Um, this is a nightmare Jack, Zach has. Um, this was added to the <laughs> game. We actually had a, a whole issue of the National Inquisitor, our sleazy tabloid. Ah. So it has it there. Oh, cool. Um, and you ready to show it up? OK. Great. It's the German, it's the German version. version, yeah. Interestingly, Zach did much better in Germany than in the States. And in fact, there are several fan sites all in Germany. And the, there's uh, three sequels in progress, two one actually completed, done by fans for this game, all in Germany. So anyway, here's the tabloid. And this is really important because there are hints throughout this that help you throughout the game. So it's not just you know, fun to have it. If you read it, you'll help you figure out a bunch of the puzzles. Um, one of the puzzles, which I like because 
I had several really bad experiences with stewardesses, and this is my way to get back at them. Um, you get to do really nasty things to the stewardess, like you know, clog up the sink in the bathroom and then create a flood and put an egg in a microwave oven and blow it up. Um, more screenshots. Um, I think this is the first game we did where we had huge differences of scale with the characters um, in a lot of different ones. I see Zach. Yeah, you can see him. There's the guru and the witch doctor with his golf clubs. And we go to Mars in the face. Um, and you get to construct, uh, I guess I shouldn't give it away, but you do get to construct a spacesuit and go to Mars yourself as Zach. And I actually did research on that. I wanted to make sure that my solution was viable. So I <coughs> talked to one of the Mars experts at NASA and told him what my plan was for a spacesuit, and he suggested a couple of things and said, yeah, that should work. So <laughs> if you ever find yourself teleported to Mars and you have these things, you'll probably survive. Um, First was the Commodore 64 version. This was the PC 16-color um, version and the FM Towns 256-color version. Um, this was a version from one of the, um, one of the games from the fan, uh, the fan games from Zach McCracken and the Alien Rockstars. Uh, I think this is the one that's downloadable. I'm not sure, but um, I have not played it, unfortunately, because I have a Mac, and it only works on PCs. And this is a collection of um, Zach through the ages. Uh, the two on the right are from two of the fan versions. And this is a really cool website. Um, Chris Toworthy, who I met through, this, through the research of this talk, um, has this amazing fan site with way more stuff about Zach than I can remember without that. I mean, it, it's, just, it's been 15 years, and I just don't remember this stuff anymore. And um, so go to that URL, and it's really fun. A couple Easter eggs. Well, um, <laughs> this was one. And one of the things you could do in Zach is once you get, um, does anyone know this Easter egg, by the way? Has anyone played the game? Yeah? OK. Um, you can mind link with animals. You get trained. You can find this crystal. You get trained how to use it. And then you can go into this trance and basically control the animal nearby. And there are a few animals that you need to control for the gameplay, but all the animals in the game you can do something with even if nothing happens other than chew. So this is a yak in Kathmandu, which is actually the taxi to get to the airport. You have to stick your cash card into his saddle, and it takes you to the airport. Um, <laughs> and if you mind look with him, you get the word chew. And you know you click, and he chews. And choose and people usually get I figure people would get bored before they got far enough but if you get far enough eventually you get a new verb <laughs> which is poop and if, of course if you click on that he does there's a nice yak pie in the back <laughs> and um, if you ask, if you ask Zach to um, put it on you know, pick it up of course he won't no um, of course the whole thing with the nose for those who don't know the game the whole thing with the nose glasses and the hat the aliens, that, the bad aliens that are trying to take over the world by, world by, um, by using this 60, 60 cycle per second hum through the phone company lines um, actually have these really tall heads. And they disguise themselves by putting on cowboy hats with eye holes. And since their eyes are actually up here, they put on Groucho glasses with a mustache and a thick nose. And so if you put on a disguise, then they think you're one of them, and, and you can usually get by without them doing anything really nasty to you. Um, do you notice the address where Zach lives? <laughs> okay, it's, uh, since I was at the ranch when we made this game, that's the same address here. Um, there it is. Um, another Easter egg. Throughout the game, you had to, um, different times you had to draw these designs on different surfaces to open doors with your crayon, yellow crayon. And of course, I was able to use my initials here at least once. It's coincidentally, it happened to work out. Um, and there's a picture of me back from then um, in the office. So I had more hair, but otherwise, not too much.